Okay, hello and welcome. It's Phil Stock from UK Flooring TV. Today we're at Texfelt uh, with Michael. Michael, would you like to just uh, fully introduce yourself in your job role here at Texfelt? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Michael Walsh and I'm the Technical and Operations Director for Texfelt. Okay, can you just tell me a bit more about Texfelt? Yeah, sure. Texfelt um, has been around for about 27 years. Um, we are part of the James Robinson Fibre Group of Companies and we've recently moved to a brand new site in Bradford um, which was the culmination of a project where we wanted to really reinvent what fibre-based carpet underlays were and other non-wovens that would support other industries. Um, what is your most recent product today? Okay, we spent the last 12 months uh, working hard on a new range of uh, underlays called Springbond. Springbond is made of polyester and most importantly with regards to this product it's a product which is clean it's got very very low VOC content and it's also made from a very high percentage of recycled and regenerated fibers for example every roll of um, the spring bond 11 millimeter contains 180 recycle single-use plastic bottles. Super, and then that's fully recyclable for the end user? The product is completely recyclable at the end of its life. Okay. In simple terms, how do we turn the plastic bottles into an underlay? Right. So, um, I think everybody understands what a plastic bottle is. So, what we do is we get a bunch of these and they get ground up into a fine flake. They're then uh, put through an extrusion process where they're made back into polyester fibres. So plastic bottles are made of polyester. What we then do is we take four different types of polyester and we blend them together and then put them through our unique Kitec airlay process and then bond them to specific densities and weights to suit the, the products that we've developed for the market. Okay, so how does Springbond perform against the rubber and PU uh, underlays? Okay, well, the Springbond has some very, very strong natural characteristics of uh, recovery and rebound, um, unlike other fibre underlays of the past. So we are very careful to engineer in a, a, a very gentle S and Z shaped structure into the material, um, and we've actually filled it full of what we might want to consider small springs, hence the name Springbond. And by doing that, we give ourselves fantastic recovery properties, but it gives a different sort of support to the underlay over things like polyurethanes or rubbers. Um, so rather than um, point load collapse, which is synonymous with um, PU underlays, our product gives a really strong mattress style spreading effect of um, wear like for, through footfall or through furniture. If we look at other attributes of the, the product, the spring bond is incredibly efficient from a um, sound deadening perspective. So the 11 millimeter has a 57 dB reduction. And that's in comparison with a perhaps 43, 44 for a good quality 11 mil PU. Super. What about tug ratings? Does it have any, any sort of like tug rating? Yeah, the, um, the products have tug ratings of 2.1 and 2.3 respectively. So they're good insulators for a floor. But most importantly also is that it is actually quite a good breathable product. So you, there is, it is mildew resistant and by using polyester that is a naturally water repellent material so it won't take any absorption of moisture and what have you. Super, so in, in relation to um, other branded underlays on the market mm -hmm. okay, that are made of some form of recycled content, yep. um, how is Springbond um, greener, cleaner uh, than the other competition that is currently out there? How okay, does it well, if you were to look at um, other products, be it uh, a rubber-based product or a, a polyurethane, they are taken from wastes from other industries and then they have to be recombined, re-glued and um, re-solidified to make the, the final product. So you've got to add more stuff to it. Our product is effectively fibre which has already been through that, that process and all we're doing is adding some polyester to it to bring the final product together. So it's, only, it's, it's one polymer, it's eminently recyclable, um, and in terms of the extra energy input or um, raw material input to bring that product together, it's a lot smaller. Super, so in terms of um, like a competitor, let's say for a PU underlay, mm -hmm. um, a lot of installers out there will be um, 
able to relate in relation to the blade snagging when they're cutting like uh -huh. a PU underlay in. Yes. How does that perform with spring bond? How, how does that cut? Well, when we set up with spring bond, um, we had a list of um, things that we wanted to achieve. And we looked at all the bad bits of what a fibre underlay, an old felt underlay used to be. So it was dusty, difficult to cut, very heavy, you couldn't put a brand on it, and it looked bloody awful, frankly. Um, what we've done with Springbond is we've tried to answer all of those points. Now on the point of cutting, because of the way we make it, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of little minor bonding points in every square metre of material, which means that when you cut it, you get a very, very clean cut because of the sheer number of little minor point bonding points. The other important thing is, a lot of the um, reasons for snagging your blades in polyurethanes is they will take different densities of polyurethane from different sources and then and glue them together and if you get a, a poorly bonded or a, a very hard piece that'll snag your blade. So that'll explain the hard points in some of the PU underlays Indeed, that are currently yeah. on the market. Yeah. Super. So in terms of what well, you've, you have just highlighted in, in relation to like the dusty feeling like felt, uh, a question that keeps getting posed to me um, off a few installers is how is it going to perform long term? Is it going to flatten a bit like felt? Mm -hmm. You know, is it going to perform like felt for the durability? Mm -hmm. You know, what what should your take on that? Well I think if you look at felt in, the, um, in, in its own right it was widely specified in the contract market because of its durability. So if we take all the, the good bits of actually having a, a product which is made of substance, of, of physical fibres, um, by engineering in our S-shaped structure uh, we have seen a huge improvement in terms of our compression recovery performance of the products. So no, it won't go flat like a felt. Okay, super. Which leads us greatly into the next question of over time is spring, uh, spring bond going to break down um, a bit like the crumb? So again a lot of installers can relate to going up lifting some old underlay, seeing a load of black dust, yep. if you will, yep. uh, under the floor yep. where over time the rubber or, or the blown rubber or, or PU is just basically just broken down. Yeah. Um, how will that perform with spring bond? Well, again, because the spring bond is made entirely of uh, one product, um, polyester. Um, polyester is unaffected by um, the atmospheric conditions around it, so it will be as good as it is today in 20 years' time. Um, a lot of the other products you mentioned um, oxidise or dry out or are affected in some way by contact with air. Okay. Uh, and that can result in the breakdown of the product and, as you say, uh, fine dusts um, forming over time um, when the thing is uplifted. So you just talk about oxidisation and if you don't mind, can you just elaborate a bit more for the installers? So in, in terms of an installer picking up a bag of PU underlay, yes. can you explain to them what they would be looking for in terms of oxidisation? So some PU um, are, very, are very affected by contact with air. Polyurethane breaks down um, unless it's got inhibitors, um, things which stop it from degrading, um, and it goes yellow. And if the, the roll starts looking yellow, that, that is actually the air attacking the polyurethane and, and starting to affect it. Okay, it's, so it's that, that's, that's a very good indicator for an installer buying a bag of underlay if it's been sat around for a wide period of time. But if it started to go yellow around the edges where it's been stood or sat, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, the it's chances starting are, to be affected by yeah, the air. Yeah. It's probably going to fail sooner rather than later. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Okay, great. In terms of spring bond and the carriage of spring bond, yep. um, how easy is this carry uh, from an installer point of view? You know, how light is it? You know, how, how, how is this going to be better for the installer, for the end user? Well, I'll go back to a previous, previous answer. We, we, we tried to answer a lot of historical criticisms of what um, a, a felt underlay used to be. And the, the sheer fact of the matter is, in order to get a resilient product, we had to make them very, very heavy. What we've been able to do with the spring bond is because of the, the structures we can put in it, we can achieve a far higher performance for a far lower weight. So bag weights for the 9mm are only 12.5 kilos and 15 kilos for the 11mm. Um, so fairly, fairly light. Very light, considering. yeah. yeah. So Lighter than um, the comparable PUs. Okay, uh, if we compare it to other underlays that are on the market, mm -hmm. you can open a bag of underlay up um, and it will be what I would class as rolled back to front. Yep. So you've got to unroll 
roll it yep. and then almost flip reverse it just to get it to the floor so yep. you've got the topper up most. Yep. Uh, how does Springbond perform it, it against that? Again, with our, pro with our process, we've, we've thought about all aspects of that sort of um, element of the, the product. So the, the roll, as it's unrolled, is in the correct orientation. Um, and if there's any, any doubt, um, the, the printed branded top layer of the Springbond also has a, a little um, um, piece of text which actually says this side up. So just to be absolutely certain which, which way we want it laying. Okay, a lot of people will notice that this uh, roll of underlay seems to be almost the same height as yourself, which yes. is going to be substantially taller um, or wider, if you will, um, than a standard roll. Yes. How does that compare in relation to other underlays in the market? Well, I think the market is very well um, used to 15 square meter rolls of underlay. Um, our rolls are slightly different, as you, as you rightly uh, point out. They're 1.5 meters wide by 10 meters long. Still getting the same coverage? Same coverage, but we've, um, we've made the roll uh, wider um, because it, it, it works well with our requirements and, and feedback from our um, fitters who we've, um, helped, who've, who've helped us develop this product is that the 1.5 meter um, seems to afford them better yields on things like stair um, installations. Yeah, so from experience on a standard staircase you will get, if the underlay is run 90 degrees to the carpet, you will yep. get four stair runs out of one strip as yes. opposed to the um, competitors where you'll only get three and some waste. So okay, so, so the 137 better. rolls would give you more waste than... Yes, yeah. overall, yeah. If, if installed correctly. Right, excellent. Okay, in terms of testing the product, yes. how has the product been tested? Yeah. I think, as you'd expect with any um, proper manufacturer, the product has been thoroughly and rigorously tested through um, British standards. So first and foremost, it's been tested to the flooring standard um, BS5808. Uh, we've also had it acoustically tested and we've had it um, tested for VOCs also. So we're confident from a technical perspective the product performs. However, there's a real life element to the, the performance as well. And we've engaged with trusted retailers, um, people out in the market, and also then professional fitters to give us, give us thorough feedback in terms of how the product performs. And through that process, we have actually made um, significant changes to the product to help fit the needs of, of the people we've been engaging with. So in terms of uh, the acoustics of Springbok, because we're still on spring bond. Uh, how does it perform in relation to other uh, brands, branded underlays yep. that are out there on the market? Um, more in so for um, impact of noise reduction. Yep. Well, the, um, the spring bond itself um, is particularly good at deadening impact noise, which is what we, we test for in the flooring market. Um, again, it, it's an attribute of its structure because of the way we uh, engineer the fibres into this uh, complex um, S-shaped structure. Um, but it does mean that it's very, very good at taking a noise or taking an impact and slowing it down to reduce the ultimate dispersion of, of, of noise through the floor. So the, uh, the 9mm performs at about 41 dB, which is uh, market leading in, in, in 9mm underlays, and the 11mm is, performs at 57 dB reduction which is um, class leading. So cutting edge material yeah, uh, right there. So. Super. So another big a big thing that we seem to be coming across a lot of is underfloor heating in the industry. Yep. Um, a lot of customers wanting products putting down obviously over underfloor heating, yep. the carpet for the comfort. Mm -hmm. um, you know there, there is limited underfloor heating underlays out there yep. um, in comparison to what is available for every other type of install. Yes. How does Springbond perform, perform for that? Well un unfortunately Springbond by its very nature is quite good at insulating. Um, it's got a TOG value of over two for both products. Um, I think the Underfloor Heating Association recommends an underlay of less than one TOG, which makes it means it's going to have to be very, very dense and probably not very forgiving and not very comfortable. Um, so ultimately, it's not designed for underfloor heating installations. Um, my view is that you know once you get a buildup of heat and a body of heat in in a product and the carpet, it will come through. But you know ultimately, if you follow the guidelines of the Underfloor Heating Association. Um, it's not really suitable for that. So 100%, any, floor, any under floor heating, always refer back to manufacturers? Yeah, the, the, you should be looking for a very, very low TOG. Um, and the consequence of having low TOG underlays is that there won't be many air pockets in it and therefore it'll be quite dense and quite, quite thin. Okay, so in terms of spring bond, 
and how it performs, you know, is it is it going to help keep the customer's house warm in relation to obviously heating bills and other little bits and bobs where everyone's obviously, you know, trying to save as much money as possible because money's tight these yeah. days for, for most people. There was an interesting piece of work done a few years ago um, and it was looking at construction materials in the whole, what goes in to make a house and, and, and what have you. And it was interesting that flooring was the only aspect of house construction which hadn't made significant improvements over the preceding 30 years in terms of energy efficiency and, and, and what have you. And that was really a reflection of a trend where people moved more back towards hard flooring, which is not particularly warm from a, from a heat um, insulation perspective. Put, put down a decent underlay, put down a decent carpet, and you'll, you'll see a, a three and a half tog benefit to your, your, your floor, and you'll have less passage of air from the underfloors into your, into your house. It's gonna make it warmer, um, and also more comfortable. Okay, um, you did highlight about VOCs. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people will understand VOCs. They might not necessarily know what the abbreviation means. Yep. Are you happy just to explain what the abbreviation is and and how your product doesn't have any, yep. or, or how you've come about to have have it with the VOCs? Yeah. Well, VOCs, volatile organic compounds. These are um, a bunch of things um, which typically can be quite dangerous and quite harmful to human health. So there was a big drive in the paint industry to reduce VOC content of paints um, over, over the, few, the last few years. And what it is, is, is when products are made from chemical-based uh, raw materials, there is an element of what we would call off-gassing, and that's the giving off of the chemical um, that went in to make the material. So people will of, of often talk to a, a new car smell or a, or a new carpet smell. That is, that is just chemicals being given off um, through the, um, through the, the carpet that, or the, the product that's been bought. VOCs are becoming more and more important to households um, and we've found that people are asking us the question more and more in terms of is this safe for my house, you know, is it low solvent, is it VOC free. Our product, because we don't use any glues, any solvents, it's made of only polyester, um, has an incredibly low VOC content. Um, to put it into context, um, the test that we put it through, we were allowed up to a, a combined to total VOC count of 8,400 micrograms per cubic meter of air. Our product was taken off test at three days, you're allowed 28, and we scored 46. Okay, so that's significantly less. It's, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny number, and this is micrograms, not milligrams. Yeah. If you look at um, some UK-based uh, PUs, they subscribe to um, clean air product um, standards um, in France and America. Um, and to gain a pass on that, they can um, emit up to 10 and 20 times the level of VOC that our products contain to achieve a pass. So we're very confident that our product is very safe and it's got an incredibly small uh, VOC content. Okay, so for the customer that's health conscious, 100% yep. perfect. This Absolutely is right. But I think also more importantly nowadays is you know the fitter's health has to be considered. You know fitters are exposing themselves to glues, resins, um, and things like that. And you know certainly low-grade PUs, which come in from abroad and are not subscribing to the standards that um, the UK prescribes, um, the VOC content is going to be far, far higher. And that um, I think has been shown in the states to. Um, adversely affect long-term fitter health. So so to keep the fitter healthy, use low VOCs or no VOCs, it's obviously going to be more sustainable for Absolutely. the Absolutely, and I think that comes with quality products in whichever material you buy. Super. Um, okay then, so obviously it's going to be healthier in the home. Um, you know, you're always doing your bit for air pollution by reducing the air pollution with the um, limited to no VOCs in it. And you have highlighted how that compares to a PU underlay, which is really good. So it, it, I think it's fair to say it's almost like a one-stop shop in terms of underlay, less, less underfloor heating. Uh, we'd like to think so. We'd like to think so. And we're evolving our range further as, as, as time goes by to, to fit other thickness aspirations, but also to, um, to provide more technical products for the market. So we're in the late stages of commercialising a double stick variant of, of the spring bond with all the good attributes of the, the low VOCs. 
plastic uh, pollution diversion from the oceans and landfill, finding a really good second use for valuable raw materials. And so all of those things will go into the double stick product also. Um, and I think it, it again offers a, another compelling, environmentally sensible alternative um, in that more technical market. Well, super. So big, big things for Spring Bond moving forward. We'd like to think so. And I think we'd like to think that the, the environmental um, benefits associated with the product really do give us a, a unique standpoint in the marketplace. Well, thank you very much for your time, Michael. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, that's UK4 and TV. Thanks.